You're listening to The Peach Pit. I'm here talking with Robin Harris from the band Wormwitch. Their new album, Wolf Hex, is out now, so check it out. Robin, thank you so much for taking time to talk to me, and welcome to The Pit. Uh, thanks for having me on. So I think a good place for us to begin right now is just simply, what have you been listening to lately? Lately, uh, honestly, I've been listening to a lot of uh, historic medieval <laughs> music, Uh uh as far as bands the uh, cavern this like french black metal band just put out a record uh like a month ago that i've been checking out a lot uh couldn't tell you what it's called because it's in french um <laughs> but the most recent cavern record is great cavern with an e at the end uh what else i've been listening to a lot of a death metal band from sweden i think called obliteration Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, I think it might be my favorite death metal band. <laughs> uh, they've been in and out of my rotation uh, pretty regularly over the last like year or so, but recently I've just been every day listening to that band. So Sweet. I'll have to check it out. I haven't listened to them yet. Is there any yeah. uh, song in particular that you like by them? <clears throat> uh, the record is Cenotaph Obscure. Is All the right. one that I've been that I've been listening to. All right, so shout out to Obliteration. Yeah. <laughs> so I like to begin with people's origin stories. So if you don't mind, take me back to when you were younger. What was around you? What was influencing you? And how did you come to discover your passion for music? Huh. Well, when I was a kid, I grew up in uh, the church. So that was a significant part of my life, just because my parents. Um, I liked music immediately. I can't really remember a time where I didn't like music. Um, and I always gravitated towards guitar music and heavier music. So I listened to a lot of like uh, Christian hard rock when I was a kid. Right. Um, like P.O.D. and Pillar and... Uh, uh, even uh, some skillet in there, you know? Yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> um, but, uh, yeah, and there was also, uh, I was into Ozzy and ACDC, and as I got a bit older. Um, but as far as, I don't know, I started playing drums. Like, my parents got me a drum kit. Uh, I started playing guitar when I was probably... 13 or 14 and I just kind of always wanted to make music I always imagined myself playing music um, but yeah I don't know it's uh, it, there wasn't really anyone around me that was musical I just kind of that was where I found I don't know I was just drawn to it I guess you just gravitated towards it naturally. So yeah. being uh, the drummer, were you usually caught in that situation trying to play with friends? Like They'd always always have to come to your house because that's where the drums were? Uh, well, I didn't actually play in any bands until I was like 17 or 18. <clears throat> yeah. And uh, I actually wasn't playing drums. I had learned to do vocals uh, and... It's funny, I was working up at a Christian summer camp uh, and uh, met a, but a couple guys there that also liked, I was into metalcore and stuff at the time, that were into that. And uh, we were horsing around and, you know, doing vocals. <laughs> and they were like, hey, you're actually pretty good. Do you want to join our band? Uh, and I was like, yeah. And it was my first band. So I never actually really jammed with anyone until I was like, graduated high school and um, what kind of vocals are we talking are we talking about like dirty screaming vocals like screaming yeah yeah all right yeah so cool is that kind of where you discovered that you could could do that or had you already been like trying to scream for a while before that i had already figured it out and so when they kind of he heard it i i was a when i was a teenager in high school i was obsessed with the band under oath oh yeah okay uh and so i just worshipped that band and listen to their record like every day on the way to and from school and at school and whatever falling asleep to it and so i've tried to figure out how to do that when my parents weren't home and i could scream in my room 
<laughs> you know um and then one day i remember figuring it out and just kind of like kept working on it and uh i don't do it quite the same way these days but uh yeah that's where it started for sure is any advice you would give to someone trying to learn how to scream for the first time honestly i have no idea i think everyone does it differently <laughs> And uh, it's kind of just, you got to figure out the, the main thing that I, the most practical thing that I could say is you have to bark like a dog and, and it's just like a sustained diaphragm vibration. Uh, but I mean, it's not all in your diaphragm. Like, I mean, like my, I'm using my, my head and my, my, my mouth shape and uh, it's kind of in the back of the throat like really deep uh but it can get i don't know it depends if you're going higher or lower it's uh you really just have to figure out what feels good and doesn't fuck you up because i definitely i have a i have a whole chunk of my singing register that's just gone oh really yeah it just skips over so if i'm trying to sing uh for any other thing for like a folk thing i have to stay below or above <laughs> a particular thing because it'll just skip right over it it sounds like a voice crack Oh, no way. And that All happens to be, yeah, that happens to be the register that I scream in for Wormwitch and everything else. So it's just kind of fried. And I know that not everyone else has that. Uh, some people are able to, uh, like Devin Townsend, for example, but he has a totally different screaming technique. Yeah. I don't really know what he does. Um, yeah, it's kind of different for everyone, I think. Yeah, I think a lot of people kind of get hung up on trying to do things a certain particular kind of a way instead of trying to figure it out you know their own Absolutely. way of doing it people are too afraid to do things wrong it's like right. dude don't worry about it just <laughs> do it do it wrong and figure it out i i want to get now into uh the band so how did you meet colby met colby uh he i was playing in actually the band that i had joined when i was in high school i was playing in like the evolution of that band so and we, it was like a hardcore band and he was playing in a hardcore band as well uh, and he's a few years younger than me, uh, maybe just a couple of years. I actually don't know. Um, but they were kind of like a newer band, and we had been playing for a while. And so they were often opening shows that I was playing. And I remember listening to his band and thinking that it was cooler than my band. <laughs> um, and being like, yeah, that Colby guy, he writes good guitar and stuff. Um, and I was falling out of love with the music that I was, that I was playing at the time uh, and the whole scene. Um, just a lot of kind of depressed emo kids. And I was like, fuck this. Um, and uh, I ended up quitting that band and uh, moving away because I was just fed up with kind of the whole thing. Um, and I was like, I want to start a new band. And I wanted to start kind of, uh, I was getting into crust and, and, more kind of old school hardcore at the time and uh, a lot of these sort of crossover kind of entombed hm2 bands like uh, black breath and uh, trap them and you know uh nails and stuff right yeah and i ended up uh starting a uh or putting a post out just in like a local in abbotsford abbotsford like metal fans or something um and i was like hey i'm looking for i want to start a band like this and he just responded to like colby just replied to my post on facebook and uh, i was like oh hey i know you from this other from his other band and uh we ended up meeting up and just have played music together ever since and that was like seven or eight years ago and so uh when you first met up with colby did he kind of share the same kind of you talk about kind of being disillusioned you could say with the hardcore scene mm -hmm. did he kind of share that same lament um it wasn't necessarily the hardcore scene as a whole it was particularly this kind of juvenile uh angsty hardcore like pop punk kids and stuff like that and deathcore and stuff that i was really so not sort necessarily of, a genre specific yeah it was just kind of a sub scene of a of a sub scene you know um and so, but but Colby actually was like a metalhead, like just fr uh, from a when he from a young age. So he was into black metal and stuff like Bathory when he was like fucking thirteen and stuff. So and I yeah. was not privy to Bathory at the time um, and things like that. And so um, 
he leaned more towards metal, but also we no, we were into hardcore at the time. Like when, when we the, the band that we started was called Dead Hand, and it was a just like a hardcore band. Um, it was more metal for sure, and it was definitely influenced by black metal and death metal and stuff. But that was more coming from Colby. Um, and then, and then later on, we were like, we just want to do a metal band, and so it just became a metal band. But even if you look back at like, and this is still present in Wormwich today, I think there's still hardcore in Wormwich, and early Wormwich is like a crust hardcore band with breakdowns. <laughs> so it seems like you guys do spend a lot of time trying to figure out like what your musical identity would be. Like you talk a lot about how you write a bunch of songs, but then a lot of them just get cut from the album because you're trying to get the best of the best all the time right that was definitely something that we did for a time um because a a large part of playing music and being in bands at the time was like an identity thing um it's like how can i express myself to the world and how can i uh make whatever my band be this perfect expression of me and all my taste and how cool i am and whatever uh, and so then you you end up obsessing over what the band is and what the songs are and et cetera, et cetera. And that's not the case for everyone, but it was the case for me. And for, for both Colby and I, we've talked about this before um, in interviews and stuff. And uh, that kind of came to a head on uh, Heaven That Dwells Within, where we were just agonizing over details. And that album I find to be sterile and shitty. As a result, and it's really not something that I would write these days. But but it was really, really well received. It was, and that was that that was kind of um, that was weird for me because I was like, it came out, and I was like, I don't like this, <laughs> and everyone everyone's uh, everyone's like saying it's good, and I'm like, I don't know, man, and uh, yeah, uh, that's kind of what led us to a hiatus in the end was that we were putting way too much emphasis on what the band is and just caring way too fucking much about it. It it, it must've been a whirlwind. I mean, from like the first release, strike mortal soil, everything up heaven dwells within all the touring, everything. It must've been just like a whirlwind of stuff happening in the band. So when COVID hit, was it kind of like a sort of a blessing in disguise for you guys to kind of like take a step back, slow down and just kind of reassess? Um, We actually were already doing that before COVID hit. Um, Oh yeah. Uh, the band was kind of done. I started a different project. Um, Colby started Boreal Hymn. Um, and we were just sort of trying out different stuff because there was just so much baggage attached to Wormwitch. Um, like, it, they were, at the time, it was like, we hate the name. We hate the aesthetic. We hate the... <laughs> we hate the... Uh, the, oh, sorry, uh, the, the name started as a joke originally, really, right? Kind of. Like a- I mean, it was like we were a bunch of hardcore kids and we wanted to do a metal band. And we we're like, I just want to do some metal shit. And I want to have a band about, you know, slang dragons and fucking shit like that because it was almost like not allowed. Right. Yeah, in, totally. In, in hardcore, it was like, I don't know, it was all socio political and yeah. uh, it was very serious and like emotional and just, not very serious, but just kind of like really angry and like. Didn't have a fantasy element to it. Yeah, and I was, I've was i always been a nerd. Like, I've always, always, like, The Lord of the Rings is my lifeblood. Um, really? Oh, yeah. Uh, uh, I grew up on those books. I grew up reading fantasy novels. Like, I'm a dungeon master. I spend a significant portion of my time. You're a dungeon uh, master? Oh, yeah. Okay, we got to talk about that later. But anyways, <laughs> keep going, keep going. Yeah, yeah. So, um, and I just kind of like it. It was it was very liberating to sort of like throw off the sort of like pretense of like cool guy hardcore shit and like being super tough and cool and just kind of do something nerdy. Um, but it took a long time to 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 kind of I don't know loosen up. I think um, because we still carried a lot of that mentality with us. I think into the into the band and just. There was this intense desire to like prove myself as being cool or true or whatever, and uh, ironically, as soon as I stopped giving a fuck, uh, I think things became way better, and that's kind of the space that that Wolfhex has come from now. And I, I think, think it's, it's obvious. 
Yeah, I think it's it's really you guys have kind of come into your own. How do you feel about this album now? I know that you know people are about to. Some people have already heard the full album, and uh, some people have just heard some of the singles you released. But what do you feel about it now? Because you talked about with the heaven dwells that the heaven heaven that dwells within. You mm-hmm. talked about that not being something that you felt represented you. But how do you feel about Wolf Hacks? Um, well, I don't necessarily care if it represents me. That's a probably thing. a healthier attitude. Yeah, it's a, it's <laughs> not the fucking point, you know. Like it's right. this isn't this isn't like a a pageant. You know? Right. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, so, so, uh, you know, I, I don't fucking care if people like it, then cool. Uh, how I feel about it. I mean, I feel like it's not, it's not perfect, uh, but it's definitely was a lot more fun to make and definitely much closer to the sort of music that I would like to make. And, uh, the main sort of takeaway from this process has been from just the process of like the the band as a whole has been learning that learning to to originality and things like that um it is like a trap i think and uh it's it it uh i'm losing my train of thought here I think I think I know what you're trying to say. It's like if you try to find this super original thing, it can actually become your own gimmick, and <clears> then, <throat> then you get pigeonholed into always doing that one thing. Yeah, the 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 main uh, sort of thrust of the whole uh, the the our our recent development has been: do just what do you want to do? What kind of music do you want to make? What do you think sounds good? Just do that. Just make it. You don't have to think about it. You don't have to be like, well, they're doing that or it's too close to – fuck that, dude. It doesn't matter. Like <laughs> if you want to make something and you know what you love and you know what you want to make, then just do it. Like, And so that's what we're trying to do now and we're getting better and better at it. And uh, yeah, this album is a step on the way. It's a step in the right direction. It's not a perfect album, but it's, it's I think my favorite album that Wormwich has done for sure. Preach, preach. <laughs> I totally behind you 100%. Uh, you, you guys have talked a bit about your writing process in the past, too. In, in another interview, Colby was saying that with a lot of the earlier stuff, you guys kind of went off into your own corners mm-hmm. and came up with parts and then brought them to the band. But with this one, it was like you guys actually bounced ideas off more in the room, trying to write things yeah. together. <clears throat> yeah. Um there, you know, there is a certain amount of like theory that that goes into it. I mean, we're not necessarily. I'm not into like actual music theory uh, very much. It's all very arcane to me. But uh, there's a, like we we do, there are certain uh, I guess like methods that we would use. Like we want to sit, it, but it's mostly based on like feeling, and it's really hard to feel the music when you're writing it in a vacuum in in a DAW and by yourself. You know. Yeah. Um, and so there's less instinct based sort of transitions and, and parts that kind of just come like emerge from the chemistry of the band. So uh, Colby has honestly done the vast majority of the writing um, over the years because he's been the guitar guy and he's been by far the most sort of accomplished, I think, uh musician that was in the band and then until we brought izzy in who is a phenomenal drummer and i've been working on my my chops like being able to play instruments so that i can write what's in my head uh and so now we're getting to the point where we have four because kyle joined the band four people who are have great ideas and can write music and we put them all into a room and we're all great friends and there's just great chemistry and the music is better as a result um (laughs) and it's just a better way more fun uh way more natural way for us to approach music these days it's less contrived i think is a big part of it Uh, and just more yeah more natural do you think uh going forward with the band you guys are going to try to write more together collaboratively in the room honestly we're doing that exclusively now we're already writing again and uh it's already i think 10 times better than wolf x so uh yeah i'm stoked so it's a good time to be a worm witch fan uh I mean, yeah let's, let's well maybe not maybe it'll turn into something that you really don't like if you came in <laughs> with with a certain record but uh it's going where we want it to go so it's a good time to be in worm witch at least <laughs> 
I want to. We got to talk about Wolf Hex a little bit. So, mm-hmm. did, what's your favorite song off of the album right now? Uh, I think maybe Canadian Denim Mountain Attack or uh, Hammer of the Underworld. And the name of the album, Wolf Hex. Mm-hmm. What, what made you choose that name? Uh, well, I had done the drawing already. And oh, you you drew the cover? I did. Yes. Oh wow. Phenomenal. That was going to be my next question. Oh, thank you. <laughs> uh, yeah, I actually do illustration for a living now, so that's kind of my thing. Awesome. Um, but the name Wolf Hex came at the end of everything, uh, and it was just kind of like, this album is kind of a sort of a middle finger to the past of the band and just like to any expectations uh and it just it just sounds badass and i was just like yeah we you know we're we're all a bit into uh some more than others the you know the occult and magic and whatever and so it's just kind of i don't know mostly just a striking <laughs> name memorable and just like yeah. Uh, yeah especially because in the past the name the names of the records have been also a statement everything became this just like statement of i don't know uh the sort of hipstery had, fucking it had to have lots of meaning and layers yeah, and layers and I of just, meaning i just don't care anymore <laughs> <laughs> that's that's the encompassing theme here is like you found yourself by letting go of all these old anxieties which i think is comes up with a lot of artists when you step into the metal mm-hmm. genre I think there's a lot of the um, imposter syndrome and yes. a competitive attitude that you just kind of get pushed into. Like, I need to be faster and more badass than mm-hmm. everybody else that's on the market. Oh, t- totally. For me, too, coming up in, like, emo and metalcore, I felt like, I was like, these people are going to think I'm a fucking poser. So I have to make sure that I uh, prove myself. <laughs> and uh, little did I know I was not working in my own favor. Well, and that. it's like a catch twenty two, right? It's like by trying to not be a poser, you become a you poser. are. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you exude poser energy for sure. Uh, yeah, so learned that the hard way. But uh, <laughs> what yeah. for you? Uh, what for you was the hardest part about making Wolf Hacks? Nothing. Nothing. I. I, I t- That's awesome. Uh, I can't think of anything. It was the most painless natural enjoyable record i've ever made that's awesome that's awesome (laughs) yeah what about the music videos that must have been fun too yeah all that honestly maybe that was the most painful part (laughs) oh really uh yeah i'm not like a huge music video guy uh i kind of think it takes away from the mystery and the sort of but uh, i mean we do them because or we have done them because the label wants them and they're good for yeah. promo, I guess, but that's also something I don't really care about. Um, <laughs> so doing them, you know, it's fun to get together with the guys and like the, definitely the uh, wolves of Osri video was, it, we basically were just hanging out and we just had a camera and we put some masks on and blew some stuff up and had some swords and whatever. So that's fun. I liked um, it. I, I really liked the style that you guys yeah. went for with that. It was really I think, cool. That's definitely the best of, of all the videos we've ever done. I think that's the best one by a significant margin. So go, everybody, go watch it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Watch that one. <laughs> but no, they're, they're all, they're all, they all guts. I don't know. <laughs> you said that you're pretty excited about the new material that you guys are writing already for your next release. Uh, without giving away too much, I mean, what can we expect on the horizon? Uh, well, the biggest thing that we've kind of done has been like, in our opinion, what, what, what is like the best black metal album for us? Like, what does that sound like? And what does it look like? And what is it? And we're just like, let's just make that. Cool. So. <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah. Right? Like, that's, I love the attitude of just like, let's just try to make the coolest thing that we can make. Like, yeah. it's fucking awesome. Yeah, like what do what do we want? You know, not what is happening or what uh, you know. What does the label want? <laughs> yeah, it's like what do I think? You know, what do like I? We have to give ourselves credit. Be like, you know, we have, we think shit's cool. Why do we think it's cool? And 
we can just make that. And like if other, I don't, you know, there, 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 there's bound to be people out there who also think it's cool, but that's not why I'm doing it. So, yeah. yeah. But those people are, are following you guys in droves because you've, you've caught on to something and lots of people really, really, really like it. I, I need to ask you though, just, uh, this is a staple question that I always ask everybody. Mm-hmm. If you were to give some advice to someone who's trying to follow their dreams, what would you say? Um, sort of similar to what I said earlier, but it's just like start yesterday and do it wrong because there's, if there's a, I think a lot of people wait to be like, I don't know how to do that. So I've got to study and learn how to do that so I can begin or so that I can do it right or do it the way that it's, it's expected to be done so that people will like it or whatever. It's like, if you want to do something because you want to do it, probably there's probably a reason why you want to make it maybe because you're not seeing it done the exact way that you would do it and you just want to do it and the literally the only way there is to throw yourself at it and do it wrong make a bunch of mistakes i think that people are like uh too risk averse and too uh they don't want to experience failure and it's like dude just accept now that you will be a student forever and you will fail at what you love doing forever um and every success is is like a mountain pushed up from from below the surface by immense pressure and, and like everything else is happening under the surface all the failure all the all the trying all the thinking all the whatever that's just you're you can't avoid that so just do it and do it wrong because that's a it, it's by design it's not a bug if you're fucking up you are you're doing it right you're doing it the way that everyone else is doing it <laughs> Wise words from someone who knows everybody. I, I really love that. That was really well said. Where's the easiest way for people to find you guys online? Uh, Instagram, probably. Yeah. Uh, uh, what's it called? Warm Witch Official, I think. Yeah. All right. You've been listening to The Peach Pit. I've been here talking with Robin Harris from the band Worm Witch. Their new album, Wolf Hex, is out now. So go check it out, everybody. Robin, thank you so much for taking time to talk to me. And hopefully we'll do it again in the future. Hell yeah. Thanks for having me.